Just because something exists doesn't mean you have to have it. Let's quickly learn something about different video formats and my thoughts as of March 2019. The way it used to be was visual formats were pretty simple for the home consumer. You had TV, it was a smaller rectangle, quite different than you're now used to. The resolution was 480. You'll also see something like 480p or 1080i. The P and I designates how the lines of video are drawn or painted on a screen to make the image usually faster than the eye can see it. These images are painted on the screen horizontally, line by line. I stands for interlaced, a holdover from television and early computer monitors. If you got up really close to these monitors, you could see the pixels or dots on the screen because of their low resolutions. Interlaced paints the image odd lines on the screen and paints all the image even lines on the screen. The human eye can see this painting or refreshing, so flicker was a problem with this method. To combat this, they increased the rate at which the screen would refresh, known as refresh rate, the most common being 60 times per second, or 60 hertz, which handled this for most people. P stands for progressive, and paints the image on the screen from the top to the bottom line with less flicker. Progressive resolutions are thought to have smoother and more realistic motion than interlaced. Rarely, your video or feed might be interlaced so most TVs allow you to set them to de-interlacing, which enables interlaced video to be viewed on progressive scan TVs. So back to our normal long-lived 480 video. It didn't matter what size of TV you had, who made it, if you recorded VCR tapes, you'd get 480p. Life was simple and no one talked about quality or resolution in those days. Things were just the way they were. The DVD craze hit in the 90s and for the most part, you still got 480. 480 was also called standard definition or SD or a four to three aspect ratio. And to save you the mass, you have an equal amount of four segments wide to an equal amount of three segments high. Come forward and we have, ta-da! Introducing the 720 craze, that's 1280 by 720 high and a new format was introduced that was 16.9, same maths as I just shown, 16 across and nine down. This was touted as HD or high definition, and sure, it was absolutely high definition compared to the earlier SD format. New TVs, new recording devices, new cameras, new computer monitors, and getting slammed on YouTube if you weren't with the in crowd posting in 720. Cool, life is good. Until it's not. We come forward to the next, ta-da! Now we've got the 1080 craze. That's 1920 wide by 1080 high, same 16 to nine format, same mass, 16 across and nine down. Now another round of new TVs, new recording devices, new cameras, new computer monitors, and eventually getting slammed on YouTube if you weren't with the in crowd posting in 1080. Since this gets confused with our 720 resolution, which was labeled HD or high definition, we need a new label. So we call it full HD to differentiate between the two. Now services like YouTube and Netflix can see what TV or monitor you are trying to display the video on and stream that content appropriately if you have an internet connection fast enough to deliver it. If not, they just downscale the delivery to 720 so you can watch it fluidly and not get the dreaded loading or buffering thing. Life is good again. Well, not really. We do another ta-da and we're into 4K. Gets a bit more confusing now as consumer 4K has a resolution of 3840 by 2160, which gives us the same 16 by nine aspect ratio. This is what seems to have become adopted for the time being. It's confusing as we have other existing 4K industry standards, for example, digital cinema with 4096 by 2160 and an aspect ratio of 190 to one, and it won't kill you with all the others. So we need a new label and we call our new format 4K UHD, which stands for Ultra High Definition. And yes, you guessed it, another round of 4K UHD TVs, 4K UHD recording devices, 4K UHD cameras, 4K UHD computer monitors, 4K UHD is four times 1080, so that's a lot of extra stuff that can be packed in, which also allows for a bigger viewing experience without losing the resolution and becoming pixelated. It's a good thing for everyone, including the manufacturers, 
who depend on the consumer to adopt and spend their money on new stuff, which keeps them in business, and a richer viewing experience for the consumer. I know the situation as I've re-geared for every one of these, now scoping out a 4K UHD video recorder, already purchased a 4K UHD curved TV screen, aka monitor, have upped my internet bandwidth accordingly, and I've got a 4K UHD computer laptop that I'm looking at ordering. Many YouTubers and of course Netflix now film in 4K. People who edit videos like the ability to do better color correction and scaling in 4K. Computer manufacturers love 4K as you need some beastly equipment to handle these 4K files. All the other 4K companies who love to see you get new stuff and that's cool as it keeps them in business. A good thing for jobs, a good thing. It increases what can be done with films and videos by the basic filmmaker, also a good thing. There's all the info on video formats, and I hope you won't be thrown now by these, and the ones on the horizon such as 8K, 12K, and beyond. Now, I said at the beginning I would give you my thoughts as of March 2019, and this is especially aimed at basic filmmakers, those usually one-man band filmmakers and guys and gals shooting videos for YouTube. If you shoot in 720, that's awesome. Keep making videos and don't worry about it. If you shoot in 1080, that's awesome. Keep making videos and don't worry about it. If you're shooting 4K UHD, that's awesome. Keep making videos and don't worry about it. Where your fail is when you get all wrapped up in the latest gear you think you need instead of just making your videos, which really is where 90% of the learning and experience is gained, not by getting the latest gear. I've said this before and I even have cups and shirts labeled with this. The worst video ever made was the one that wasn't. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.